and welcome to Tiggy and Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. And I know a lot of people believe that I'm self-assured and I'm confident and that I've created a great life. And that is actually very true because after my Thriver recovery from narcissistic abuse, I am having the most amazing life experience I could imagine. Yet I really want you to take, I really want to take you on a personal dive with me today into how before I healed the biggest hook that I was suffering with narcissistic abuse, that that was just so not the case. And what I'm going to share with you today is information that I've never shared with this community before. It's really a previous dirty, awful secret that I was once terribly ashamed of. And the reason that I'm sharing this story with you in such a deep and personal way is because of two reasons. The first one is I know how good it is for my soul to be truly honest and vulnerable because that's such a vital part of my personal evolution. And like so many of us, I didn't come to earth to have a simple, straightforward life without drama and pain. I came here to evolve my own soul and also to help shed shame, fear and pain for the collective. So it's not like I get to a point where it's all done. There's nothing else to do. It's ongoing. And the second reason is I know that if you are a beloved member of this community, you also know that we're all in this together and my story is your story. And if I can help you find the ways to empower and heal your life, just as I have mine, that makes me happy beyond measure because it makes every part of the journey so worth it. So today I want to share with you my most debilitating narcissistic hook and the basis of it is this. Once upon a time, I didn't like people at all. The roots are innocent. They were terror of people, feeling separated from them and not belonging, but the results were awful. I didn't like people and I didn't want to connect to them. I opened this conversation up on Facebook not long ago, asking people if they felt like they didn't belong here, if they felt different and not accepted, and they didn't how to assimilate their life on this planet with other people. So many people replied and they said, yes, that's me, Melanie, please talk about this. And that's what I'm doing today because it was my worst hook that kept me in narcissistic abuse. And I know you might be asking and thinking, well, how and why? I promise you I'm getting to this, just as I promise you that all of you who feel like this, and there's many of you, and who have connected to and been abused by narcissists, this is no coincidence. So gosh, where to start? Because truly my channel, as I was writing my thoughts on this topic for this video, was throwing so much information at me that I could barely record it fast enough. And I struggled to know in what order that it should go. So here goes. What does it feel like when we don't feel like we belong and when we can't connect to people and when we've prided ourselves in such things as solitude and connecting to animals, as an example, over connection with other humans? And how have we found that being close with other humans means that we can be extremely hurt, we can be crapped on, criticised, rejection, abandoned and punished? which of course may include such experiences and feelings of even being brutalized, tortured, pillaged, pillaged, raped, obliterated. What does this mean, these feelings and these fears? It means we have deep traumas that often we were born with, that were entrenched in our DNA from ancestral and uh, human history and past life experiences, which all three of those can have been, may have been brutal. 
And I know many of you were like me because I've talked to many of you personally about this and in healings, feeling scared, aggrieved, and even shocked as far back as you can remember, even as a young child, looking at other humans and shaking your head in disbelief at the ways we can all treat each other and what's gone on in the world, the atrocities, the cruelty the murders, the rapes, the acts of genocide, the terrible things. Like so many of us in this community, I was absolutely that child. And at times I was so terrified after watching the news that I didn't want to leave my house. I hid behind my mother's legs and I was like this Velcro stick on child. And naturally, from a very young age, because of feeling like this, I had a deep distrust of humans and I put my energy and my love into animals instead. Animals just like tea. <laughs> and as a child, I wanted to retreat and I wanted to be a recluse. I wanted to learn things and experience nature and hide out. And of course, I wanted human connection as well. But could I trust it? So often I couldn't. Friendships would become false, people would betray me and hurt me, and again I would retreat to what I knew was safe, my spiritual studies and my animals. And as I grew older I found out that alcohol helped me connect with people. I had less care about who they were or what their intentions were when I was drunk. I had more confidence. I could be myself more without the fear of what these people might think of me and do to me. And during that period of my life, I had many friends who not surprisingly were also people hiding and running from their inner feelings with the use of sub substances. And it appeared that a good time was had by all. Yet time and time again, my greatest fears unfolded. People became someone I couldn't trust. I kept experience people who were out to rip me off, hurt me, steal my material or undermine me in some way. And at this stage of my life, I had no idea of the quantum law of so within, so without. I didn't know that my painful traumas and beliefs and how I was showing up and the conduct my life was in made me a prime target as well as an active unconscious co-generator of these experiences. And I was terrified about the consequences of confronting people, of being able to assert myself without them turning on me. And I secretly deeply wanted some big, a big strong person in my life or more than one to be my buffer to protect me from all of the bad people because I certainly didn't feel like I could do it for myself. So who are we being when we are that person, not integrated with others, feeling separated and having to stay away in order to survive? We are the human misfit, the straggler, separated from the unity of the human clan, the one out on their own trying to survive on their own, without the love, oneness and shelter of other human beings. If you were abused by a narcissist as a child, you know directly what it is to be abused by someone that society would have us believe is the people who should love us and we should be able to trust the most. Which of course confirmed the beliefs for you of a cruel humanity that is not safe. As an adult, if, you, if you've always felt separated and not accepted and safe with other people, we are just as susceptible to a narcissist as the gazelle who's been cut off from their herd and has become prey to a predator. And of course, as an adult, the narcissist in our life didn't appear as a predator. They appeared as the person who gets us, understands us, and offers a unique way to connect to humanity that appeals to us and is something that we can trust. 
This person even offered us a quirky take on what they believed about humanity that may have made us feel like we had a private sacred club with them, us against the baddies, and we can have our own little utopia together or our own loving world, regardless of the baddies out there. Little did we know that we just locked ourselves into a little seemingly blissful bubble with one of the worst possible baddies. This person knows we fear and distrust people and we don't have our boundaries sorted out yet. And that we're susceptible to handing power away to stop people crapping on us rather than knowing how to be strong and assertive and safe within our own rights. In reality, what has just happened is life has delivered to us on a silver platter the exact match of our DNA terrors we were born with, of which were instilled within us at the very least from an early age. People are bad. I can't trust people. People would hurt me. And maybe even, I don't like human beings. I love plants and humans, but I really, plants and animals, but I really hate people. And of, of course, because it's a part of our DNA to crave connection, we were open to connecting with a special other. Or as a child, we completely required connection to survive with our parents. And thus, we've experienced narcissists. Because of our disconnect and fears, we've always been naturally drawn to people who appeared mesmerizingly aligned, interested and caring for us. And strong enough in their own confidence to help keep us safe with our own inwardly precarious human position. So this was it, my worst hook with narcissistic abuse, feeling different, feeling like a black sheep, feeling disconnected from people, not being able to trust people, fearing people and thinking that they had the power to destroy me, annihilate me and obliterate me. And as a result, not liking people. And that was how terrifying it felt for me. And I experienced that every time I got close with people, something horrible would happen. And of course that continued in even greater intensity and terror when I got with narcissists. Yet because of my fear of humanity and having assigned the narcissist as my savior, I couldn't initially let go. And even after I did, for a long time, I didn't realize how much in regard to all of this stuff needed to be addressed and healed. After narcissist number two, especially, I had the incredible experience of realizing these sets of beliefs that have tormented me my whole life. The beliefs about not liking people. And I really hadn't wanted to connect with people and because it had been my normal to be a hermit, I hadn't realized it until then. I had so many beliefs about the atrocities of humanity and my disgust about it, including, of course, abusers, people that were acted like narcissists. I really disliked humanity so much that I would have happily put up my hand to be shipped off to another planet and join some alien civilization that had their act together instead of being here. However, short of finding some stargate somewhere, I really had to make the most of the life that I was living and sort this out once and for all because never again did I want to have to experience another narcissistic relationship with people that were also disconnected from humanity. And narcissists are the big bad kahunas of that. And I'd had enough of going through the painful human existence of being disconnected from and not enjoying other humans. 
I'd done so much work on myself after narcissist number one that I knew the facts. If we don't change core belief systems in our inner identity, then any change is slow, hard and painful, if not downright impossible to achieve. And also I realized, I knew, that we have the power to change any belief systems that are not serving us and become the beliefs that do. And all of our true self beliefs are about unity, consciousness, oneness and love. When we take away the painful illusions and wounds that are creating us as otherwise. So I knew I needed to fix it with other humans, fix my terrible beliefs about them and re reach compassion, love, healing and oneness with humanity. And you might not want to do this because I know there was a time I didn't want to do it. I felt sick at the thought of doing it. Yet I realize that this massive shift is necessary, not just for me, but for all of us. I knew that I had a responsibility to help birth this shift through me of heaven on earth and peace and love and wholesomeness, which is not going to happen if we're determined to stay in separation consciousness and indignant resentment and fear. It's only going to happen if enough of us lead the way and become the shift that we want to experience. And I knew that if I stayed in separation and fear with humanity, that I'd be doomed to the miserable experience of feeling like I was in a fishbowl, looking through the glass, never being able to join in, which ironically is exactly what narcissists feel like. So I could have taken the easy way out and just stay as a hermit with spirituality, nature and animals and really fear and distrust humans. But that's not the life I truly wanted to live. I wanted to sort this out. I wanted to go for it. I wanted to have the highest human experiences. And I wanted to stop feeling envious when I saw groups of people connected, loving, hugging, laughing. I wanted to be included and loved. I wanted to belong. And because of that, I made a determined decision to shift everything I had inside me that was not permitting that organic reality to start flowing through me. And what I discovered was the beliefs and traumas I had held about how terrible humans were. And as I cleared them out and up, with quantum freedom healing that made space for feelings of connection, understanding, compassion and love. I also needed to shift the beliefs that damaged people or people not completely healed or conscious were unsafe. Was I completely healed? No. Was I completely conscious and safe? No. Of course not. None of us are. We're all experiencing life suffering triggers and we can be irrational and uncomfortable to be with when our wounds strike. That's the truth. If we want to be in humanity, it's time to start loving ourselves as we are so that we can then connect to and love others as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a crazy cut off lonely life. And are we going to look down at our funeral from above with hardly anyone there and be happy that we stayed safe and disconnected? Or will we regret that we didn't love ourselves and others enough to connect more? Then after those shifts, I needed to shift all of my fears and traumas about me personally being wrong, defective, unacceptable, not wanted and unable to speak up and be true to myself without being shot down or abandoned or thrown out or punished. And as I shifted tons of ancient beliefs and traumas that were about humanity and self, 
When I did that over the following days and weeks, I found that I started smiling and eye connecting with people. When I walk past people as strangers, rather than look down, I'd look them in the eyes and I smiled. I discovered I would look at others, whether it even be on TV or in real life, and feel an incredible heart connection forming. I could even observe others who were acting badly with compassion of deeply understanding that they too carry trauma and they were hurting people because of their own deep hurt. Also, I found I was not as anxious about what people thought of me. And I started just wanting to connect with and understand people and find out about them for the sake of it now and not for any other agenda. And I love the fact that when I would see a crowd or a group of people, rather than wanting to recoil and retreat, I'd be happy to get amongst them. I started seeing humanity in all its glory and the love, spirit, kindness, joy and altruism that so many people share with others. And I realized rather than there being the illusion of separation, evil and cruelty, that there is love. We are connected and we can all heal this. All of us as individuals and in unity. And for the first time that I could remember, and this feeling has stayed and grown within me ever since, I felt safe to be human and safe to be on the planet. I'd never belonged before. So this was pretty extreme. I'd never felt like I belonged. In stark contrast, before these shifts, I used to feel like a mistake, that I'd somehow landed at the wrong destination. I was in the wrong place and the wrong time. And I know so many of you still feel like this, but I promise that when you find and shift yourself from these old core beliefs, you will be like me, having the experience of life force flowing through you and loving life and people and loving being here, right here, right now, knowing you are home. And we are also fortunate because this level of love and connection is exactly the bedrock foundation of our incredible community here that we share in. So I hope with all of my heart that if you have struggled with feeling alone, cut off and unsafe from humanity, and maybe even like me, not liking other humans, that this has struck a deep chord with you. And I wish with all of my heart that you too make that passage from the darkness into the glorious light where I found myself standing with sincere others. Not people who need to be perfect and get it right always for me to feel safe, but people who just like me are perfectly imperfect because that is what humanity is. And we can love and connect to each other regardless, because that's what true love and humanity does. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd love to learn more about how to heal for real from all of the stuff that goes with toxic relationships and narcissistic abuse and our own trauma, please, I'd love you to sign up to my free 16 day recovery course. And that includes an invitation to a healing workshop with me, a set of eBooks and heaps more. And it's really easy to access. All you have to do is go to melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free starter package. And if you want to see more videos, please make sure that you like and subscribe so that you're going to get notified as soon as each new video is released. 
So until next time, it's goodbye from me and Tiggy, who's sleeping on the job. Hopefully he's awake next week. So please keep healing and keep smiling and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.